Yes, crews, how are you? I hope you're having a beautiful day because today we're going to be talking about peptides. Peptides that help grow your hair, yo. Help reduce that androgenic alopecia, yo. So, yeah, peptides for your hair. The first peptide, well, actually, hey, 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 before I get into it, I've been using all these peptides because... I ruptured my bicep tendon. And look, this is after all the peptides. The scar is healing up very well. This was just sewn together with massive gaps in it recently. It's healing up very fast. And I attribute that to the peptides that I'm using and the growth hormone, which I believe is also a peptide. So I'm using these peptides in combination. And these are also helping with my hair game, yo. So, the first peptide we're gonna be talking about is epitalon. Epitalon? Yes, epitalon. Epitalon is a bioidentical uh, peptide which is found in the pineal gland. Now, the pineal gland is responsible for circadian rhythm, the production of melatonin, and in interpreting signals from light signals into uh, circadian rhythm signals, and um, the production of melatonin and uh, cortisol secretion as well. So, basically, epitalon is said to increase lifespan, um, restore the circadian rhythm and cortisol, uh, like levels, in old, like, rhesus monkeys and other animals, and there have also been some human trials with this as well. And um, basically, it's an antioxidant peptide that helps improve the immune system, it's anti-carcinogenic, and it also helps to elongate the telomeres. So for all y'all that don't know, um, our genetic code, our DNA, is wrapped up in genes and these are grouped together in chromosomes. Now, with each chromosome, it's like a shape and on the end, it's like unwound and then wound back up again to read it, I believe. My uh, knowledge on this isn't as extensive as my knowledge on powerlifting. Um, and basically, on the end of each gene, there is some redundant genetic code. Uh, and this is the telomere. Um, every time the gene, the DNA, is read and reproduced, part of the genetic code is lost. So there's some information that's lost. And um, this comes from the telomeres. And once a certain amount of the telomere is lost, the cell will no longer reproduce. So yeah, it's good to have longer telomeres. Telomeres are an indication of one's biological age. So you can send a sample of something off to, uh, uh, there's, there's a few different um, companies that will examine it and look at the length of your telomeres and they will estimate your biological age not your chronological age and often your biological age ties in with how old people think you look on average people have got a pretty good eye for looking at how much how much abuse you've given your body how much stress you've been through and um yeah they've got a pretty good eye for how old you look is often quite similar to your biological age. So, yeah, <laughs> my experience with this compound. Um, basically, it's pretty crazy because the protocols that I've read online, I've like double checking the calculations. I'm like, is this right? I think this is right. You need to inject one whole vial of this peptide every day. Sorry, my dog wants to play with a toy. Kutch, hey, on your bed, on your bed, leave it. Okay, get it, go on. Right, sorry, my dog wants to play with a toy. So um, basically, <laughs> yeah, you inject a whole vial of this compound every day for 10 days in a row. I've also seen another protocol where you inject half a vial every day for like 20 days in a row. 
and um, then you don't do it again for maybe six months, maybe a year, and then you repeat the process. I have some seen some people online that have said, I did it one month, then I had like a month off. Then I did it another month, and I had a month off. And they like do a hardcore super cycle of it. But um, yeah, personally, I did it about six months ago, and I'm doing it again now. So yeah, this on the twice per year schedule. It's not that expensive. Well, it is, but if it's adding extra years to your life, hey, who can put a price on that? It's not that expensive, considering you have to do a whole vial every day. And um, yeah, basically, I experienced not many side effects. People say that it helps with their circadian rhythm, it can help improve their sex drive and their libido. Um, and maybe I slept a bit better, maybe I had interesting dreams. Nothing of note to report back on. I'm taking so much melatonin at night and the occasional Valium where it's like, I, I, I didn't notice it. I didn't notice uh, any specific change that I can attribute solely to the epitalum. So this peptide was referred to me, it was um, recommended to me by a Polish steroid doctor who um, is also a heart surgeon. And she recommended Epitalon for hair growth. So it makes sense. If your body is becoming biologically younger, when you're younger, you have more hair. I'm not sure of the mechanism of action by which epitalon is meant to increase the hair, stop the androgenic alopecia, but it's meant to. So yeah, maybe in a few months, we will see. Now the next compound which this doctor also recommended was GHK slash CU. Um, the CU stands for copper. Now this is another bioidentical uh, peptide which is released from injured tissues and it helps promote uh, wound healing in the area. Um, it's often used in cosmetics and that's because it really assists with um, uh, skin rejuvenation. It also improves skin thickness. Um, it can help reduce fine lines and wrinkles. And it also helps reverse some of the effects of sun damage. Now, levels of GHK CU are a lot higher in younger individuals and they decline more and more as we advance in age. So restoring them, the levels of this compound to uh, more youthful levels can be of a great benefit. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, it promotes collagen synthesis. So personally, I didn't use this and when my arm was in a cast, I started with all these peptides as soon as I got my arm out of the cast because it was fixed at 90 degrees, um, attaching the uh, bicep tendon to the, uh, the bone here. And um, I wanted to have some mobility before I started uh, kind of infusing collagen into the whole area and getting it seized at a 90 degree angle. Um, so I have heard people describe this compound, GHK-CU, as an aromatase inhibitor. And apparently the compound itself is not an aromatase inhibitor. Now, uh, GHK-CU has a massive affinity for copper. And the copper itself is actually meant to have 5-alpha um, reductase, I said aromatase inhibitor, Cruise, cruise. It's not an aromatase inhibitor. It's a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor. This copper, when it's present, is meant to have 5 alpha reductase inhibition qualities. So, what we're talking about here is reducing the amount of DHT that is present in various tissues. And um, this is a logical explanation by which it may help promote hair growth. And uh, also we're talking about collagen synthesis. And I know that the the effect of collagen synthesis um, 
it, it can promote hair growth. So um, compounds like minoxidil, they are, that's an hair growth agonist, and that has effects on collagen. So these, this is me theorizing here. I do not know for sure, but it's promoting collagen synthesis and the copper acts as a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor to some degree. Now, my experience with this, um, well, it's the first ever uh, peptide that I've injected, which is not just a white Boring old beige white powder. No, this is purpley, kind of blue, purple. Yeah, it's bright. It's a bright color. We all want to be injecting something bright into our bodies because it's cool, isn't it? Right. So, um, first of all, that's pretty cool. It takes quite a lot of bacteriostatic water to dissolve it because there was 50 milligrams in this vial. Sometimes you get five milligrams of powder. Sometimes you get 10 milligrams of powder. This is the first time I've ever had 50 milligrams of peptide, raw pep peptide in the bottom of the vial. So it took a few mils to dissolve it. And again, with the dosing protocol with this, Online, I've seen people recommend injecting it for a blast of a few days. Uh, some people are saying at very high dosages, actually. Um, like, I think it was like 100 milligrams a day, which is like two vials, two of these big vials per day for wound healing. And um, I ain't got that much money to spend on peptides, even though I'd like to experiment. Uh, but I didn't experience any side effects that I noticed from using this peptide. And hopefully it's gonna promote the restoration of some hair. I used it again about six months ago. And um, that was actually a different variant. That was GHK, no, it was PAL slash GHK, um, which I guess it's a variant of it. That one wasn't purple, this one's purple, so this one's this one seems to be pretty good because it was purple, um, and so I've used both of these compounds. One time was six months ago. The other time was now, and so we'll see in a few months if we get a bit more density. Some of them vellus hairs growing through. The hair cycle is about three months long, so it takes typically about three months until you see the changes. Now I am using growth hormone right now. So the growth hormone massively speeds up the hair growth and maybe these cycles will come quicker and we'll be able to see the changes soon. Uh, so um, the final peptide that we're gonna talk about is TB500. TB500 and BPC157 were the first ever compounds that I injected into myself. Um, these are peptides used for injury healing. And um, yeah, I, I did notice immediate effects. Out of the two, for a muscle injury, I really noticed the TB500 promoted, it just, it made my muscles feel like they were healed a lot faster. The BPC-157, I don't know if that's better for like tendons and ligaments and this type of thing, but for the muscular healing, I really personally felt the effects of TB-500 very strongly. And apparently when you mix them together, it creates an even better synergy. And then again, when you mix them with growth hormone, um, again, an improved synergy once more. So, uh, TB500, it's an anti-inflammatory and it's generated in the area where there's an injury and it promotes wound healing. In fact, this peptide is one of the first proteins to be upregulated after an injury. So yeah, it is one of the body's first lines of defense uh, when there is an insult to the body. Um, TB500, it promotes angiogenesis. Now this is the production of new blood vessels. It also encourages stem cell migration, stem cell differentiation, and it de decreases inflammatory cytokines. Um, so yeah, basically, I haven't noticed any negative side effects from taking this compound. I have noticed a couple of times when I was using it on a different area of my body from a different supplier, um, that the area seemed to get 
kind of like knotted before it got it was like the day afterwards it would be a little bit like raw and then the day after that it would be like oh i'm fixed now i don't know if other people have experienced this if i was just having a reaction to something else or what was going on um but i do find that this compound provides provides very quick uh muscle healing uh after an injury and it's meant to help with tendons, ligaments, and all these type of things, but it's also supposed to help with your hairline. So basically, I can see a good mechanism of action here. Obviously, it's an anti-inflammatory. You don't want a load of inflammation going on and stuff. But one of the main ways in which androgens cause androgenic alopecia on the head is by... Um, basically reducing blood flow to the hair follicle. Now this reduced blood flow causes follicle miniaturization. So the thickness of the hair gets, th it gets thinner and thinner and thinner until basically it just gives up and you lose the follicle eventually. So in doing things that increase the blood flow are massively beneficial in itself. Now, this has got so many other property it's got a myriad of all these different properties that um yeah who knows what other things are affecting the hair growth but yeah the angiogenesis definitely i can see that as a as as a big factor in fact the first time i ever used this um it was a shoulder injury the first time i ever chose to inject anything into my body i knew that i was going to go on steroids eventually but this is just like a gateway drug right so um basically i was doing it sub q proper sub q i wasn't going into the muscle at all because i was terrified of that and um, i was injecting sub q on this shoulder and uh basically in the areas where i was injecting because i was really hammering the areas i noticed that there was like loads of tiny capillaries showing up on the surface. And so here we have some evidence of angiogenesis right here. And I also noticed that I had black floaters in my eyes. Now I Googled it, black floaters are supposed to be um, bits of blood that have leaked into the eye, into the aqueous fluid. And then uh, basically they just float around so um and they, they eventually get reabsorbed it's fine so my theory is that it locally on the shoulder it created new blood vessels along with the bpc 157 um it can it created these new blood vessels locally and then in the eye it did it globally all over my body in the eye it did it on the surface of the retina and then when i did some of them there are 300 kilo squats the pressure um force these capillaries to pop because they're kind of very superficial very small very delicate and uh in doing so it created these floaters in my eye so i think that's quite good evidence that this does promote angiogenesis and um yeah let's see how all of these combine together i'm hitting them with a short blast post injury um, the TB500, I'm running for the longest out of all of them. Um, the Epitalon for the shortest and the GHKCU, somewhere in between. And uh, in about three months, about two months from now, we might get to see the first evidence to see whether this is improving or, you know, it shouldn't be hurting my hairline, but hopefully it's going to improve my hair thickness. And I'm combining it with growth hormone, which is a hair growth agonist. And I am also combining it with the very occasional topical dutasteride. If I have too much of that topical dutasteride, I get erectile dysfunction. Um, I it's not it's not good. I don't like it. I don't like the effects of it. I don't like dutasteride, but I'm applying the minimal effective dose, which seems to be under one mil of topical dutasteride per week. Anywho, it seems to go well systemic with me. Um, um, let's see what effect combining all of these together has in about three months' time. So I, I believe, to me, subjectively, it feels like my hair is getting thicker when I look in the mirror. 
Um, yeah, it definitely feels like that. I've got lots of shedding going on still, and I'm still taking 350 milligrams of testosterone per week. So who knows? Let's see what happens in a few months, and I will report back to you. Now, for all of you watching, if you've managed to get all the way to the end of this video, can you please leave comments about your experiences with any of these peptides and things that have worked for you, getting your hair to grow back and be thick, luscious, and full of volume and vitality, um, or anything that's helped made you make you feel or look younger, um, yeah, please drop a comment down below, let us know how it go, and until next time, I'll catch you later. Peace!